Okay, class, uh, again, keeping on with our uh, final week theme of uh, the HR dimensions in the context of nonprofit management, uh, there are very clear, uh, specific nuances within the nonprofit world. HR management is intricate and difficult and challenging uh, no matter what the organizational sphere may be. But in nonprofit management, you're dealing with um, people who are certainly almost always well uh, motivated. That's the one uh, positive element within uh, nonprofit uh, organizations. But then you get the challenges of relatively low, generally speaking, comp compensation rates and ways that then require some um, real thought about how you do compensate people adequately and how you might reward them through intrinsic means rather than the purely salaried material uh, compensations. Um, those are always difficult and a lot of it really does depend upon the organizational context and that's really what I wanted to get to. That uh, one of the preliminary things you really need to do uh, when you enter into this HR management side is understand your organizational context so that if you have a highly uh, structured and uh, fairly routinized uh, and uh, basically recursive uh, type of operation, um, such as, for example, within uh, medical clinics. You know, the intake can be for any number of things, but the processing does follow a generally a fairly rigid protocol of, you know, checking for insurance, uh, getting the forms filled out, finding out about previous conditions, and uh, then keeping uh, and maintaining records. So you, you have to really um, have people in place obviously with optimal organizational skills. People who can uh, do that work and take care of those devilish details that come with operating within a medical clinical context. Uh, this extends to things like homeless shelters and food banks and um, um, abuse centers, uh, you know, shelters, where again, the intake and processing even though the cases are individually unique, everybody does have their own stories, uh, the actual uh, process of uh, responding to their needs is fairly routinized. You know, you are checking them in, you are uh, evaluating what the issues are, and you are uh, then basing, you know, your uh, protocols, your, your, your using your protocols to uh, respond to those individual needs. Um, it gets a little more tricky when you get into much more individualized and uh, unique uh, operations within the nonprofit world. You know, for example, if you are a, uh, a community theater, you're putting on different productions perhaps every month or two. And uh, so the demands on hiring the the, the actors and um, going over the the roles and <coughs> excuse me the set design all of that stuff you know tends to be a unique project and obviously demands a great deal of creativity not that you don't get that in the other realms as well but it's particularly the case in a in a um, performance arts uh, kind of context. So that's where I'm getting at with this, is that when you do make your personnel decisions and when you are looking at filling staff requirements, you really pay close attention to what the job is and how those uh, individual traits and temperaments are going to fit within that context. You know, um, as I said, this is not easy stuff and everybody is unique. Uh, and sometimes you get uh, real tough cookies, and sometimes that's really necessary. You need some enforcers sometimes in your staff to get things done. 
you see that, for example, Sister Rosemary strikes me as a tough cookie uh, and uh, make sure that things get done and will not brook uh, a lot of um, you know, wasted time on uh, things that are not central to the mission. So, um, you know, consider, again, that organizational context, what those needs are, be it they routinize or be they more, or more on the creative side where you do have to uh, show a great deal of flexibility and imagination in responding to the mission. Uh, finally, uh, I wanted to mention that, you know, we do have another dimension to this, which deals with uh, bringing people in who are, or I should say, maintaining people who are already in the organization uh, because, again, they are true assets and you need to really deal with professionalizing operations. And that's where you get the concept of best practices so that you have a routinized operation, but that doesn't mean it stays the same all the time, that you do learn from uh, other organizations. And that's where the value of attending professional conferences uh, within your uh, mission realm comes into play. This way you, you gather that uh, those new ideas and those ways of sharing information that help your overall operation uh, proceed and um, uh, work much better. So uh, in conclusion for this section, organizational context, uh, fitting the right people for that right job, uh, taking into account that sometimes this is very routinized stuff uh, bordering, bordering on mindlessness, but on the other hand, creativity is always a good thing, imagination is always a good thing, but you don't want it to uh, put a person who has that uh, propensity into routinized positions because then they just go crazy and will end up being unhappy. You want to take um, you know, those assets that people bring with them and put them to the best use possible, putting them into the right slots that work best for them. Um, later, we'll get into volunteer management, which is a whole other uh, challenge, um, but one that, again, there are a number of strategies that actually work quite well. Don't forget, uh, keep working on your presentations. Uh, we're looking forward to that. We'll be commencing that in the next uh, couple of days or so. Okay, so take care. Bye.